Good morning, Nazarene. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord and just worshiping together. Hallelujah. We speak to all of those out there, our, our Christian brothers and sisters that are worshiping and holding on. We're going to praise the King in the midst of the storm in joy and sorrow. Come on, I praise your name.
Hallelujah. Not just today, but always. to worship him today because he is our risen Lord. We worship Christ our Lord. We worship Christ. He is our Lord. Oh, To him today we worship Christ our Lord. Let's all say it together. We worship, we worship Christ. Let's say our Lord.
Minister Dwight Langley is going to come lead us in our scripture and prayer this morning. The Lord is my refuge. You will make the most high your dwelling. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your temple. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. That's right. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it's once born again a few of your children are calling on that most precious and holy name. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for letting us have church in the house. We ask that you let your spirit fill our house. Thank you for putting the armor of protection around us, Heavenly Father. Thank you. This thank you. As we open up with the, the, the economy and everything's getting ready to open up, give us confidence that you are still in control. Protect us and lead us and guide us so that we can be a blessing to someone else. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you put your anointing on the word as we give it to us today. Let, us, let it lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. Give us a little giddy up in our step. Because your love is like a mother's hug. So when we close out and times get rough, we think about mama's hug and we know everything's going to be all right. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you take over this service all over this land. Bless each other the one who's going to hear this message today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we greet you all in the name of Jesus. Since we come uh, to sing this song, we do want to say that we are uh, remembering the family of Sister Faressa Merriweather. Mother Ruby Lockett, and we're lifting up Mother Clara Jackson and her family and the passing of Brother Harold Jackson. And if there are any others who, who lost loved ones and, and we may not know about it, we, we'd like to know so that, we can, so that we can also lift you in prayer. This song says that we know that all things work together for our good because we love him and because he called us. And we take him at his word. We believe his word that says that all things, the good and even the bad, are working out for our good. And so we're going to trust God, take him at his word, believe just what he said. And we are, we are waiting on the manifestation of all the promises that God has made to us. And just trust and know that it's all working out for your good. You 
if you will, would you put your hands together and thank God for the psalmist and type something, let them know, be encouraged. We're so blessed to have them and their faithfulness. We appreciate you, every single one of you. We thank God for you and y'all singing like y'all were, like the place is packed. But you need to know that you are sending encouragement all over the country. I've got a dear beloved cousin, Kathy, in Indianapolis. She's being blessed by you and another cousin's in Hopkinsville. There's folk in Texas, D.C., all being blessed. Mr. Ray and, and Maurice are being blessed. And so thank you for your faithfulness because your labor, here it is, your labor is not, is not in vain. <laughs> Amen. Uh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Oh, where, where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where would I be? I want to know. Oh, he kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Oh, he rocked me in the cradle of his love. When he knew I had been battered by the storm. So if, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be? I want to know where would I be? Don't you know he kept my enemies away? God let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Hey, he rocked me in the cradle of his love. When he knew I had been battered by the so if it had had not been for the Lord on my Tell me where would I be? I want to know where would I? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm here today because I've been kept, been kept by the Lord. In the 18th chapter of John, in the 11th verse, I want to drop a little anchor right there. And in John chapter 18, verse 11, Kathy, here's what it says. And Jesus said, put away your swords. Shall I not drink from the cup that the Father has given me? Moni, here's what it says. Put away your swords. Shall I not drink from this cup that the Father has, has given me? Um, every journey creates a series of questions that beg to be answered. 
when, when we used to pile in what many folk thought was a church bus. <laughs> Our 92 Ford Chateau, blue and white, with captain's chairs and a bench seat in the back that folded down into the bed. Whenever we were going to take off on a journey, usually it was the five Raskets plus Adrian, sometimes it may be an Aunt Tamara, sometimes maybe Aunt Esther, is always usually somebody rolling. Most of the time it was Adrian. And, but there would be a series of questions that would be launched. One question that was usually asked even before we got in the van, where are we going? Another question that was asked, how long is it going to take <laughs> to get there? Another question that one child in particular would ask, <laughs> she would ask this before we even got out of the city limits. Shante, Sh she, Shante, she would ask, uh, Shalante, she would ask, where are we going to eat? <laughs> well, there's always a series of questions, and usually down the road, somebody inevitably is going to ask this question. Are we there yet? I want to take those three words, those few words, and hang my title, hang that as a title on this issue that I want to lift today. Are we, are we there? Are we there yet? Uh, every journey, it helps to have a good road. I would share with you that the first superhighway that was recorded was made by an emperor by the name of uh, Apia. The road was called the Apian Way. He was he wrote he built this this road. It was a ran southeast from from Rome. It was 132 miles 132 miles long. It's about 20 feet wide. But everybody celebrated this road because no longer did you have to worry about the rain and being in paths and mud, but you could travel without the, the struggle of going through, through mud and dirt. It was a, one of the first super highways. Uh, along came another question as a result of building that 132 mile long road that went from Rome to Capua. The other question was, as individuals were traveling along the road, the question still came up, are we there yet? And so someone came up with the idea is to create something that could help people know where they are as they moved along the journey along with the road, was created something called a milestone. A milestone was given specifically, it was created specifically to help people know how close they were to their destination. We have mile markers today, but it originated from the idea of a milestone. A second definition of a milestone is an action or event marking a significant change or stage in our development. The second definition, the second definition of a milestone, it's, it's an action or an event that marks some significant change in our condition or in our development. Paul mentioned at one time, he said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child, but I don't know, he didn't tell us what day it happened, but we do know he said, I didn't stay that way. <laughs> I had a milestone. When I became a man, I put away childish things because there was a milestone have I got a witness here? I don't mean to be nosy, but some individuals back in the day, 
folk used to have what was known as a little black book. <laughs> Phone has changed all of that. Now folk got two or three phones, cause, but then when it was expected that when a person, when a man got engaged, he would throw away the little black book because there has been something significant that has changed in his life and he's making a commitment to one person and he doesn't need a list anymore. John 18 verse 11 is an interesting text. It's in the midst of Jesus' arrest. Now here's what, here's what you'll find. All of, all of the gospel writers record that Jesus was arrested. All of them record that when Jesus got arrested, Peter went thug wild and cut off the ear of the high priest's servant by the name of Malchus. But only one author writes about the cup. It's John in the 11th verse after Jesus, after Peter goes thug wild. Jesus says to Peter, put away your swords. Shall I not drink from the cup that the Father has given me? The milestone, the mile marker that you see in this particular text, it shows a couple, it shows, really shows a contrast between Jesus' conduct and Peter's conduct. It, it can show where a person is or their action can show <laughs> where they aren't. <laughs> But in the text, in John chapter 18, verse 11, in this one sentence, I want to share with you that Jesus shows a way to help us measure if we are there yet. Um, when Peter, when Peter saw the, the incident, Peter saw it from one way. But here's the beauty of the thing. Jesus called it a cup. Peter thought it was tragic, but Jesus just simply called it a cup. Betrayal by a friend, Jesus called it a cup. Folk waiting until you're your friends have left and try to and sneak up on you at night. Jesus called the incident a cup. Even somebody who was who you fed, taught, and ministered to, now done dropped a dime and sold you. Jesus called all of that. This ain't nothing but a cup. When Peter saw it. Peter thought that Jesus was being captured. <laughs> but when Jesus sees it, Jesus is showing him true commitment. Let me rewind. Peter acts as if we got to fight and we're not about to let even these couple hundred people take us. And if they take us, they ain't going to take us without a fight. And Jesus said, in Matthew, Jesus tells Peter, no, dog, this ain't no fight. Don't you know that my father has 12 legion of angels? And if it was a fight, all I had to do is I could, just, I could just bat my eye and they'd be Johnny on the spot. This is not a fight. Jesus shows Peter. What this is, is true commitment. The ability to do something that may be painful personally, but if it's in the cup, you're willing to do it because the Father said so. He calls it, he calls it, he calls it a cup. Sometimes, somebody 
got to work the night shift <laughs> so that other folk can enjoy the day shift. Hey, 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 it reminds me there's a man, there's a man, matter of fact, there's a family that I love. God, God has an interesting way of putting around me some people all the way from Hopkinsville that he's used to do some great things. And there's a man that I love, and I'm not going to mention his name, but if you talk to him back in the day, even today sometimes he'll, he'll say something kind of funny because if it's at night and you say, how you doing, he'll say, good morning. And when he used to say it, you know, you know, I, had to, I kind of looked at him kind of strange, but then it dawned on me that he intentionally years ago made a commitment to work the night shift. You see, him and his beloved wife, they had children and they knew that children, they need 24-hour surveillance. They need somebody to be over them at night and somebody to be over them during the daytime. If they go mount to anything, you can't leave them like the alligator leaves her kids, like the turtle leaves the nest. You need they need surveillance, and so they, they came up with the plan, and he worked the night shift. Matter of fact, here's what I want to show you. His day became night, God somebody, so that somebody's night could become day. It, it looked strange, but he spent a long time working so that somebody, he worked at night so that somebody else could enjoy the day. And if you saw him at night, he'd, he'd say, good morning. And if you spoke to him during the day, he'd say, good night. But that's my friend. Here, what we have, Jesus is working the third shift. <laughs> Jesus is doing the hard work of the day shift that only a few people can do so that we might be blessed to live in, to live in the day. Uh, it's just a cup. Jesus' response was, especially was trying to show Peter, I know where I am. I know what marker this is. I know what mile marker. The modern day, the modern day mile markers, when you get on the highway, and, and I would encourage you, especially if you're in a hoopty, you better pay attention to the mile markers. The mile markers will help you to understand where you are. Let me give you just a little bit of background. If you're going from the south to the north, the numbers start at the south and they increase as you go north. If you're on a highway going from the north to the south, the numbers always decrease. If you're going east to west, if, you, if you're going from west to east, it starts at the low number on west and goes higher when you move east. And I love, I love, I love the fact that in the modern day, one of the things that has happened, they have synchronized the exits with the mile marker. So if you are at exit, if you got an exit 46 and you're at mile marker 13, you know you got 14 miles till you get to your exit. But then they did something even better because suppose you were in trouble and you said, I'm at mile marker 14. Well, sometimes if you can be in a dangerous, precarious situation where you need help right away and a mile is a long way to be searching for so, somebody, so the new modern mile markers has a number and then it has a decimal point and another number. And what it says is, you can say I'm at mile marker 6.3, which means I'm at the sixth mile marker, three, six and three tenths, so that they will know exactly where you are. I'm just trying to help you to understand, when Jesus was on this journey, he knew exactly where he was. I just finished passing the mile marker in the garden. Have I got a witness here? And now my prayer time is over, and I've already decided I'm doing God's will. It is, this, this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm just at the next mile marker. 
it's already been written. Somebody would betray me for some silver. Somebody would diss me with a kiss. This is all part of the mile marker. Somebody needs to know today, up in here and out there, you got to know where you are. And it's just a cup that we are having to deal with. How? Then how? Then how? Then how? How? How do you drink bitter cups? Jesus said in the same sentence, shall I not drink this cup that the Father has given to me? Here's how you deal with your cups. He points to his relationship with the Father. Junior, if you're going to handle the cup, I know you're young and you got this issue and then you got that issue. And then one year it seemed like if it wasn't one thing, it was another. How do you get through it? You can't get through it without focusing on your relationship with the Father. It is my relationship with the Father that helped me do what I do. <laughs> you, are you hear folks you folk talk about do what you do, do what you do. You can't do what you do if you don't have the strength of the strength of the of the father listen to what he says the father he picked this cup the father the father gave it to me we you know and remember when you were little and your mama would come with bad with bad med bad taste in medicine you remember how they used to give it to you in the tablespoon and, and you push it away, you, you were taking a risk because that, because that medicine's expensive. And you, but you were thinking, if we spilled it, <laughs> if we spilled it, I won't have to drink it. But wasn't it funny when you surprised that, that uh, you spilled it, but they reached around and, and got another bottle and, and they're never going to stop until you get this medicine in you because you're sick. <laughs> and their love for you is so great. It's so great that they will pick for you some medicine that don't always, don't always taste, don't always take, taste good. We had a child who had to take medicine on a regular basis. And as she got a little older, she didn't like it, but she knew she had to deal with it. And I convinced her that she, she was such a big girl that I didn't have to hold <laughs> the teaspoon anymore. I was letting her know, I know you, you know what this is for. You know that this is important. Matter of fact, you remember, you remember when they went from the teaspoon until they had that little thing, it was about that tall and about that big around, it had like a scoop on the end, and then you pour the medicine in there. I would pour the medicine in there and, uh, and hand it to her, and she would look and, and she'd take a couple of deep breaths. I said, you a big girl, you can handle this, you a big girl. And she'd take it down because she knew there was more. It, it, was, for her, it was for her good. Here's the truth. The truth is there's some medicine you take because there's something lurking in you that you can't see. But if you don't get something in you to combat it, it'll bring you down. <laughs> Sometimes you have some, something in you. Um, my children are prone to some allergies and they're prone to, uh, to asthma because they got it from their, their father. I never, I don't know nobody on the Allen side that's ever had to deal with asthma. But, but on my side, I, I have some issues with allergies. I have some issues with asthma and because of who the father is. <laughs> the father has passed on some stuff to the next generation, and because we know that, we expect that. When it shows up, it's no surprise. Why? Because we know who the father is, and it's passed on. And so there are some things we give them because there's some things lurking that, that we have to keep under control. Grandbabies, I apologize, but it was passed on to me. And some stuff you got to take because there's some stuff in you. 
But then some stuff you take because you are sick, but then there's some stuff you take to keep from getting sick. I should have brought my pill box today. I got me a pill box, and in my pill box, there's about five, four or five pills I take each day. Now, two of them has to do with blood pressure. The other has to do with Trudy pressure. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know nothing about CoQ10. My doctor didn't suggest that I take CoQ10, but, but there's a big old black capsule in there. And that ain't from the doctor, that's from Trudy. There's, a, there's another one in there, it's a vitamin. And it's got all kind of stuff. And I don't really worry about, I don't care what it is, it don't, don't matter, because I know who asking me to take it. She said, you'll be better. <laughs> this will help you from getting, so there's some stuff we take because we are sick. Are you with me? But then there's some stuff we take to keep us from getting sick. But here's what blows my mind. I ain't never heard of somebody taking medicine so that somebody else can be well. Shell, when you got a headache, you got to take the aspirin for yourself. And you taking the aspirin ain't going to help Junior even though y'all might have the same issue. However, Jesus, good God Almighty, the, fa <laughs> the Father takes a cup and asks Jesus to drink it so that other folk can be healed. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. God puts the sins of the world, your sins and mine, in a cup and gives it to Jesus and asks Jesus to drink the cup so that we can be healed. Wasn't he wounded for our transgressions? Wasn't he bruised for our iniquities? And by his stripes, we are healed what are we healed from? Our sin, sick soul gets, gets healed as a result of Jesus drinking this cup. A lot of folk want to name, claim, and frame and use that word to walk around and heal somebody. Okay, there's a whole lot of folk. There's a whole lot of hospitals. Go on in there. Walk from one end to the other. Lay your hands. But that scripture was tied to healing a sin-sick soul. And Jesus drinks a cup for the benefit of the world, of mankind, because there are people who are sick that are coming and by, by faith in him can be healed of their sin-sick sin -sick soul. Jesus says you deal with the cup by, by recognizing your relationship with the Father. And then the last thing Jesus does, Jesus shows that he trusts the Father. Ed, listen to these words. Michelle, small word, Michelle, he said, shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? Shall I not drink the cup? That the Father gave me, it shows that he trusts the Father. And even though it may be painful, he trusts the Father. Even though it may be difficult for others to handle, he trusts 
the Father. I'm about done, but I'm going to give you two, two reasons to shout. Get ready. Get your fingers on the board so you can type in your shout. Get your meme ready. Find your meme and get ready to push it. I'm going to give you two reasons to shout. Because Jesus is showing Peter, I trust the Father. Shall I not drink this cup that the Father gave me? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Help me, Greg. Here's the first one. Gee, the, the, God told me to tell you this morning. He told me to tell you, here we go. I got this. Go ahead, push it, push it me, push it, push it, push it. God told me to tell you, I got this. Hey, here's what Jesus told Peter. Don't you know this is part of the Father's plan? He's got this. He knew they were coming. He knew what they would do. He knew what they would say, and he already prepared me for this. Shall I not drink this cup? Because the good news is the Father's got this. Go ahead, do your shout. Go ahead, do your dance. Go ahead, because the Father got this. I'm going to give you a few, a few seconds to get your shout on, because you need to know have you reached the mile marker where you understand the Father? The Father, the Father's got this. Hey. All right. All right. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I'm going to give you a chance to catch your breath because most of us just got strength to shout one, one time. But we got a few folk in shape. And since you went home, you can hold on to something. But here comes the second one. Okay. That first one didn't get you. God's got this. That didn't get you. Okay. Here's the next one. Are you ready? I told you the first one you ought to shout because God has got this. He knows about layoffs. He's got this. He knows about downsizing. He's got this. He know you can't get your do or your toes done. He got this. Ah, that's the first one. But here, good God Almighty, here's the second one. Not only does God have this, but here's the next one. God has got you. <laughs> Ooh, we, he's got you. Hey, he has you. Have I got a witness here? If he didn't have this, he still has you. No weapon formed against you. <laughs> he's got you in his hand, and nobody can fuck him. <laughs> Go on, do your dance. Go on, holler till your neighbor knock on your door. God! God has. He's got you. Ain't that good news? <laughs> ain't that, ain't that good, ain't that good news? Uh, let me wrap it up like this. Uh, FaceTime has given me the benefit of seeing some milestones in the lives of my, of my grandbaby. I remember, I remember hearing when they were, they were, was announced they're expecting. And then I remember the milestone, the gender. 
And then I remember the milestone, they were born. And then I remember the milestone, they took the first step. The milestone, the milestone. They're in preschool now. The milestone, graduation at preschool. But I got a little one now. He's, he's pulling up the rear, waiting on two more cousins. And this week, his mama had handed him a juice, a juice box. And he was turning the juice box all around and everything. And I said, Moni, pull the straw and put it in there, give it to him. She said, he don't know how to drink from a straw yet. And he'll probably, he'll squeeze it. And he said, I, she said, I, I usually pour it in a sippy cup. I said, go on, put the straw with it and, and give him a chance. And, and she, she took the box and took the straw out and put the straw in and she put it in his, put it in his mouth. And, and he, he sipped a little bit and, he, and his mouth was still open and it, and it spilled out of his mouth. And she said, see, but then, but then all, all of a sudden, she didn't see it. I didn't see it. But I saw the evidence of it. The taste buds sent a signal to the brain. And the brain said, this is good. And the brain said, tell the lips to lock in on the straw. And I got a witness here, and I saw a milestone. His lips wrapped around the straw, and he never let go. I said, he never let go. He kept drinking and drinking and drinking. She said, CJ, catch your breath. But he knew how to breathe and sip, breathe, and sip, sip, and breathe. But he never let go. He never let go. She kept saying, CJ, you need to stop. But his brain, have I got a witness here, sent a signal to his lips. This is good. Don't let go. And he didn't let go until the jukebox was in. Hey! Come on, Julia. Hey, hey! Hey, hey! He didn't let go until the jukebox was empty. Hey! Hey! I got some good news for you. Oh, <laughs> taste and see that the Lord is good. Our ju juice box, they get empty sometimes, but we serve a God. His mercy is everlasting. His goodness endures forever. Lock on and don't let go. And don't let go. I'm going to drink this cup. Don't let go wherever you want me to go. Don't let go whatever you want me to do. Don't let go. Hey! <laughs> hey! 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 Praise the Lord. Hey, let's don't stop celebrating the word of God. Even in your homes, wherever you may be, Let's thank God for the word of God today. It is our prayer that you have been blessed and helped and strengthened and encouraged by the word of God, by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank God for his word and we thank God for the man of God who shared the word of God with us today. And um, we just believe that... Um, all this good preaching is not in vain. We believe that the word of God has not fallen on deaf ears. We believe that somebody has heard the gospel and believed. 
And that's why we preach Jesus, so that somebody might hear and believe. And so we, we come today to give you an opportunity to respond to the preaching that you just heard. And we don't want to assume that just because you're watching us on Facebook Live or because you have access to our website, we don't want to assume that you know Jesus just because you tuned in today. But we want to offer Christ to you, my sister, my brother, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you've done, whatever you may be in right now, the good news is he loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you today. And so we encourage you, if you hear the Lord knocking at the door of your heart, we, we, we urge you to open your heart and let him in. And he'll come in and he'll make all the difference in your life I bet if I pass the mic today, there are some people who will testify that just knowing Jesus, just being in a relationship with Jesus has made all the difference in my life. And so we urge you today, give your heart to the Lord today. Let us pray. God, we want to say thank you. We thank you for your word, God. We thank you for your word that changes lives changes minds, changes direction, changes attitude, God. We, we thank you for your word, God. And Father, we thank you, God, that somebody has heard the word today and somebody has believed and somebody is ready to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. And so, God, I just pray that, that you continue to speak to their hearts, that you continue to move, dear God, Move them into the right direction so that they can have a loving relationship with you through your son, Jesus Christ. Then, God, I pray that you will reveal to us how we may be a source of help and a source of strength for, for those who are new believers, dear God. We thank you. God, again, we thank you for the man of God. We thank you for using him. Thank you for speaking through him been speaking to us, God, and we say thank you. And God, we'll say yes to your will, yes to your way, yes to your word, God. We thank you now, and it's in Jesus' name we pray with a heart full of thanksgiving. Amen, and thank you, God. I hope most let go. Y'all got to help me with the word. Who knows the word? Well, I just couldn't take it anymore. Never have it down. Jesus came and blessed me. God kept me. So I would. So I wouldn't let go. Yeah. His mercy kept me. So I would. 
Because he can't be. 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 Sometimes up. He can't be. Sometimes down. He can't be. Tell me, tell me. So I wouldn't let it go. So I wouldn't let it go. The enemy tried, but I wouldn't let it go. His plan didn't work because I didn't let it go. Because I know, I know, I know what can happen if you don't let it go. I know what God can do if you don't let it go. I know, 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 I know. So I wouldn't let go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. My, my, my. Somebody looking at me right now, my prayer for you is that you will recognize these circumstances. Jesus called them, it's just a cup. You can drink that cup if you be mindful of your relationship with the Father. And if you place your trust in him, he'll give you the strength that you need to get, to get through. I typed a little earlier that I uh, wanted y'all to find, some, find a cracker or a little piece of bread. If you don't have no juice, get you some Kool-Aid. Don't have that. All those things that we took, the little chiclets and the... Welch's grape juice, all of that wasn't anything but a symbol. It just simply says that we remember that Christ gave his body for us. He shed his blood for us. And Jesus said to his disciples and to the church, do this to remember to remember me. He didn't say you have to do it in a sanctuary, just do it. Because he knew there would be days you couldn't get to the sanctuary. When Jesus talked about church, he was never thinking of building, he was thinking of the people. And he'd say, he'd, he said he'd be with you. So we pause now to remember his body that was given, his blood that was shed. Father, have mercy upon us. We love you. We thank you. We thank you for the cup that you picked for Jesus, and we thank you that he drunk it to the very last drop. And because of him offering himself for the payment of sins and our opportunity of placing faith in him, we come to you as your children, and we pause to say we remember the price that was paid. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that dwells within and we look forward to the day that you'll receive us and we will worship and work with you all the days of our life. Bless now in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. To the entire team, again, let me say thank you. We have a, an, an amazing group of individuals that are very dedicated. Brother Tracy, we appreciate you handling the sound. And Jerry, appreciate you doing uh, the video. And we have some psalmists. You've seen them rotating in and out. But Junior, thank you for arranging music and just uh, keeping us blessed. And to the entire band, God bless you. Greg, Mario, Bertel, God bless you. God bless you, our associate ministers. Uh, Y'all are an awesome team. We have a security person who gets everything opened and uh, making sure that it's good. And so, Ed, we appreciate you. 
And then, of course, my helpmate, she just keeps me uh, encouraged. And thank you so much, Trudy. I appreciate you and love you for all that you do and just the partnership that God has given, has given to us. We thank you so much. What an amazing gift you gave to us last week in the drive-by. Yeah, listen, I, I, didn't know it, I didn't know a thing that was going on, but, uh, but it was such a, such a blessing. I came into the office today, and, and someone had some balloons. And family, you know who you are, and I want to thank you so much even for that. One day this week, somebody left a hum, a hum cake and I did good. I went home. I cut it up in pieces and put it in the freezer. And and uh, so thank you again for 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 that blessing as well. Here, I know what y'all have been waiting on. I heard what the governor said uh, yesterday, and we've we've already been planning and trying to pre-plan and prepare on how we are going to come back. If you listened, one of the things that was said, the individuals that are over 65 are still encouraged uh, to remain to remain home. And even if we, if and when we come together, there will be some social distancing and all of that. This week, uh, I'm going to provide a, a video, and I'm going to send it out to Facebook, and we'll get the message out to you. Uh, matter of fact, we'll put a we'll put a link so that even if you call the church, you can you can find out. And so I'll share with you how we will how we will be coming back. We're going to definitely have a lot of sanitation stations where you can keep your hands clean. We're going to have uh, some spacing in the pews, and and uh, we're going to have to have a section for people who who shout. We got some folk. You you shout. You know you shout. And we're gonna have to give you some more room. That some of y'all, you don't you don't normally shout, but this time you probably will. And so we're gonna have to give you some room. And then. And we got a, a few cute. We got, we got a few cool people. You know, you don't ever have to worry about them shouting. But but it just it just might happen. And so it's, it just because if if what we've been through won't make you, a, amen, amen. So we're gonna so we're gonna try to make sure every, everybody has space uh, to shout, and we'll communicate to you. We will definitely be modifying the services there'll be they will be a lot like what you are you've been viewing we're going to get we're going to get in and we're not going to do a lot of preliminary stuff uh not going to be doing a lot of walking and all of that we're going to get in uh music's going to come preaching's going to come and then we're going to be leaving we'll not be having bible studies or uh, sunday school so it's going to be abbreviated so be ready be ready for change. Thank you for your uh, faithfulness. Again, you have been giving diligently uh, through Givelify, PayPal. Some of y'all have even been, uh, I want to encourage you. I know some of you, you don't use uh, checking accounts and all of that, um, but at least use an envelope, amen, uh, when, you, when you put it through, through the through the, um, we've got some honest people, and so they know that just because it's on the floor don't mean it's theirs. And so we thank God for all of your faithfulness, and we're trusting God to be with us. Amen. Again, I want to ask that you please remember Sister Clara, Clara ja Jackson, Brother Harold, God has received him, and, and he's home rejoicing with some grand, with a grandson and others who've gone on before. But what an awesome, loving man. We thank God for the Jackson for the Jackson clan and uh, his, there will be a, I think a visitation today, this evening. Uh, there's um, social, uh, so social dist distancing uh, at, uh, at Mason's and so, but please be prayerful, be prayerful for them. One last announcement. Remember tomorrow is the last day uh, to register to vote. I also want to share with you, if you received a ballot, if you received a ballot and the, uh, um, the, it was already filled in, the party uh, part was already filled in, those are being disqualified. And so I want to encourage you to be mindful of that. If you received a mail-in ballot and the party was already filled in, there's been some issues going on with that. And so you might want to look into that and so that you can make sure that you are ready uh, to, to vote this uh, this fall. Amen. Hey, listen, it's been wonderful. I'm going to close us in prayer. We thank God for you again. Keep us, keep us in prayer. I'll pray for you. And so we sing, you pray for me. And let's watch God, watch God change things. Gracious God, our Father, 
we love you, we thank you. We thank you that you know where we are on this journey. Help us, dear God, to trust you. Help us to appreciate the relationship we have with you as a father. You're always providing, protecting. You're always preparing. You're always posi positioning us so that we'll be where we need to be to receive what you would have us to have. have. And Father, I pray that we'll reach that point, that milestone, where we'll know this isn't the first pandemic we've ever faced. It won't be the last. And you've kept us. And Father, I pray that our faculties will help us to lock in on your goodness and not let go. Pray that we'll be filled with your goodness and your mercy so that we can go out and show somebody some love and mercy. Give, give wisdom. You've given tremendous responsibility to individuals in our family and their decisions affect the lives of others. Give them wisdom. Give them tenderness. May they operate from the purity of your heart okay. being led by the Spirit. And we thank you and love you. Bless us, dear God, as we initiate and prepare to come back together in your own time, in your own way. We say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. See you soon. See you soon.